Welcome to Workshop Wednesday. Today we're going to look at journal pages. How do we create fun and interesting journal pages just to reflect a concept or a theme? What are some different types of techniques that we can use? And we'll just explore a whole lot of different options. Let's talk about journal books and journal pages. How do we get started? So the first thing I'm going to show you is a sample booklets here. This one is pretty thick, but this is just foam core. So it's just white foam core. You can buy it at any craft store. You can buy it at Walmart. You can even buy the cheaper kind at Dollar Tree if you like. But I cut it down to a size so the front and the back are the same size. And what I've done is I have decorated it. So on this one, I've used old lace. I love to go to the thrift store and look for um, things really cheap on sale that I can get just for a dollar or two. And then with curtains and tablecloths like that, this old lace, then we cut it up and use it for textures. And so it's really exciting to see what we get when we print with it. So this particular one is lace that's wrapped on this cover. And then this is a plastic doily and it's been cut and everything's been glued down with tacky glue. This right here design is part of one of those plastic beach bags and I've just cut part of it to be decorative. And these cutouts are uh, embossed wallpaper. So I think you can see it. So embossed wallpaper, which is kind of hard to find. It's coming back a little bit, but I love to look for those at thrift stores too. You can always find scraps and it's really fun. Um, to add to these type things. So once all this was assembled and glued, then what I did is I rolled and painted all kinds of different colors of paint on it. And then I took different types of paper and I printed it. So I used just drawing paper, watercolor paper, um, cardboard, and I used tracing paper. And what I did is on the inside, this shows you one of the prints, it's fun to see what colors it picks up and what textures, and so I glued that to be on my inside. And then I've just put rope around the edges, just some cheap um, plastic rope. But what the spine is right here, you see the spine? This, whoops, it won't lay flat, it's too full. This is just a piece of canvas, and you'll see the stitch lines on here. And so what I've done is I've taken strips of just drawing paper, you could use watercolor if you want something a little heavier. And long, skinny little strips that are about two inches wide. And I fold them in half. And then what I teach my students is to stitch in the ditch. So the signatures go on the canvas. And you can see here where the signature is. But it's stitched in the ditch. So there's two sides to that. So when they put the page in, they glue it on one side. And then they do the next page and it glues on the other side. So it works out really well and makes it nice and clean and finished. And then they can always paint the back side if they want to. But it's 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 a nice way to put a book together. So and this is just decorative fringe that was donated, I think. So we can look at some pages here, and it's really fun because layering is so valuable when you're doing uh, journal pages like this because it creates more depth to your pages other than just having a page and writing on it. So it gives you a chance to explore and have some fun. These right here was out of magazines, and I'm not sure if you've ever done this technique. It's a lot of fun. But you can cut a picture out of a magazine and put uh, shipping, packing, clear tape over it, burnish it really, really well. Let it soak in water for 10 minutes, and then the back will roll right off and allows that to become more transparent. So you could lay it on there and some of your image behind it can show through. You have to be careful not to rub the whole thing really hard or your design will actually come off. So here's that plastic uh, doily again. It's kind of fun, I made a pocket out of that one. Um, building up, you use a lot of scrap mat board and cardboard underneath things to build it up so it has other layers. I like to add other textures and things to my pages too. This is really fun. This is just foam cutouts. Uh, you can buy them at any craft store. But it's really fun because actually if you heat those up with a heat gun, 
you know, real carefully not to burn them, you can take a stamp and then stamp into it and it makes it embossed so it's textured. So it's kind of fun. So a lot of these pages are just a lot of things where we've done different play day things, experimented, have some fun. This is the cover printed on burlap and then I used stamped words on top of it. Stamped these images, drew on top of some of them. I sewed them onto the burlap before I put it on the board to make it stiffer for the paper or for the book. So that's a lot of fun. We've done things where we've wove paper and then attached it to other papers. Taken jeans and cut them apart and used them for other things. Use the pockets on the jeans and write on it and add little things, little tags that you can make and stick little messages in the pockets, kind of fun. This page here is, and this one, I think several of these. These are all pages that have been started out with a napkin, this one also. So what's really fun is you can take a napkin, I'll show you an example here. So you can take a napkin. So this is a Halloween napkin, it's fun, Disney one. And napkins come in ply, um, just like your toilet paper and paper towels. And so the more plies you have, the more expensive they're gonna be because the processing costs a lot more to do that. So here's one, and I've started this where I can pull this apart, just like this. Okay, save that, you might want it for something else. But now I have just one ply. What I can do is, this is poster board, you can use um, watercolor paper, drawing paper, whatever you have that's inexpensive, or cardboard. Um, I'm choosing to do white, so this stays white underneath, because it's thin. But I can take some Elmer's glue water, or tacky glue, watered down, and brush over this, and add this napkin to this poster board. And I can create part of a background. If I did that, then I'd want to put it in the corner, I think. So I could utilize the rest of the space on my page. And notice that the napkin had these other prints on here that were fun. Here's one that's a single Mickey with bats. Here's one that's mini. And then here's one of the two of them together. And so what I could do is I could come along and maybe I want to cut those out and utilize those on my page, but I don't like the way that it would lay out as if, if I had done, if I had done this whole page, some of them would have been upside down. So what I'm gonna do then is, let's just say, for purposes of saving time, let's say I've glued that down. So what I can do is I can take this and I can cut this out a little more neatly. And then I could actually use glue water and put it down on these and have some fun and utilize the other parts of the napkin as well. And then come in and paint around it. I could use markers around it. I could stamp. I could build some things up. Maybe I wanna make a bat 3D out of just black uh, mat board or even construction paper and put cardboard behind it or something that you might have at home. So that's how easily a page can come together if you start with a fun background. Maybe there's some party napkins that you have left over from an event and you can utilize those on a page. So those are a lot of fun. So let me just go through a few more. Um, you can go back to an episode earlier that showed how to do the handmade paper. That's what these are uh, from that episode. It's really fun how to get the different textures. So you can go back and watch that episode. Here's this one with the more of the rings. But you can collage them, put them together. I love using um, this gauze and stretching it and pulling it and making textures with it on a page with watercolor. But also I use it afterwards with different uh, watercolors on there, let it dry, and I add it to my pages just to add some more texture. There's some sewing ones, different ones. Um, some transfers, there's uh, different transfers. And I'll go through and create some videos on some of those different types of methods. Here's one, actually, not that one. That's wallpaper and book pages. They're always throwing books out. And so 
I grab up books all the time so we can utilize the book pages for different projects. This was um, the tissue paper that was in a box that we bought a fossil watch for one of our daughters. And this tissue paper was in there, it was really cool. So I turned it into a page titled Key of Opportunities. And then I just wrote a lot of different words and added some things to it um, and created that. This one, <laughs> this one I have made um, a video on how to sew uh, a kimono. And so we made mini kimonos and then we had these scrap paper strips and so we just wove the paper strips for a background and then the mini kimono could fit on there and then you could write, you know, your comments or about your process or anything that uh, you learned when you made that kimono. There's one book. I have several of these. Looks like I'm losing some of my inside pieces. Here's another one. This one uh, is one of the first ones I had done, and this is foam core, but I used a decorative paper over it, and then I put some sheer fabric on it, and I'm not sure you can see it, but there's a nice, like a screen type texture here. And then I took shoe polish and distressing ink, and I just rubbed it over the whole thing. I came back and added clear plastic here, and I stuck an old photograph that I had found that was of my mom and her sisters and their cousins when they were in high school. So it's just a fun way to kind of scrapbook that. This is some of that embossed wallpaper, but then I chose to paint over it. I've added things, some things have fallen off of this because I've had this one around for a while. So, so had me paper. So here's another example about layering. This paper actually was the background embossed wallpaper that had watercolor painted on it and then stamped onto another piece of watercolor paper. And it created this fun texture where it only absorbed in certain places. And so I took that and then I just added to it. There was a section here that I cut out, but to make it show up more, I put an accent design behind it of a color. And then I chose to use that color of fabric and then I did a transfer method to transfer this old image of this woman on there. Another thing too is I time. I always have a theme for my pages and I'll write about it and reflect, but I also try to incorporate uh, key items that will add and enhance and um, just make the, the whole page um, just a little richer in design. Notice this little string right here. If I didn't have that on there, the page would be okay. But it's really interesting that all of a sudden when I just put that string that kind of uh, coordinates with the page, that somehow I put that over there, it created another layer of depth to the page and it created another line of interest. So it kind of helps hold everything together. So I'm just gonna flip through some of these really quickly to give you an idea. Here's one made a pocket out of different paper and the clear plastic, but then made some tags, just watercolored the tags. These are those uh, off-white tags that you can get at the store. And then stamped on them. But this was a word that was already pre-cut. I just added to it. But it's just kind of fun because I have the writing back here, but then I have writing on the back of these tags too, just to create some interest. More layering and sewing. This is fun. This is where you have a longer piece of paper and you fold it over and make flaps and you can sew it down. These are all sewed down. And I made a whole bunch of different tags and I put different quotes on the back of them and they fit within these different pockets. So I made, you can see the different sizes of pockets on here. And so these all have different quotes that I like um, or I reference a lot. And so it's just a neat way to store those and the tags are made out of all kinds of different papers. Some of them are um, like handmade papers too, rice papers. This one, it uses the corrugate um, collaged in there for the background. And then of course the layering and stamping. Um, this gold shiny is an, another foiling effect that's really fun to try. Um, there's an old gift bag, cut half of it and just some more things added on there. This one again is that clear shipping packing tape over a magazine to make it transparent. 
So you can see that there's a bunch I, I also put in here. I'll start backs of pages, and then I'll come back and I'll use those for other things. And so I think that makes it fun um, to have some that I start and then I can come back and, and see what else I can add to them. Okay, so there's that one. And then I have one, another one here that you can see I got even bigger. And people ask, why is that so big? Well, the reason is, is because my pages got thicker. And so, as you can see, when I open this up, my handmade paper where I shaped it like this little cherub's face, that becomes about a half inch thick for this sticking up. So as I had a whole bunch of pages that were really thick, it was important to make a book where the spine and the pages were gonna be separated enough to allow for that. So these are just some more different ways that you can make some pages. These are the napkins again. This is just collage, handmade paper, decorative papers, fabrics I found um, with different themes. This was a batik leftover. It was a sample actually, a sample that I did for my students. And so I turned that into a page and stitched on it, did some free motion stitching. But there's all kinds of techniques that you can do. Textures, I love doing different kinds of textures for pages and backgrounds, um, especially to watercolor a page and then take bubble wrap and paint on bubble wrap and then stamp it on top of the watercolor. It creates this really cool effect. Uh, embossing added to that one. And then collaging different papers, weaving papers. Here's a fun thing too, is you can use lunch sacks and you can cut them so then they just pop open and you can put hidden messages inside there. Maybe you can use the other part, um, fold it different ways, create pockets that are hidden. So um, <laughs> it, your page becomes interactive and engaging for others. This one was a numbers theme. And so um, I have three children and so I, just use the number three, cut it out of cardboard, covered it, but then I made it like a accordion folded out, like this, kind of like paper dolls, and then I wrote about why that was meaningful to me. And then added all kinds of number prints, textures, things I found. Um, this is even borders off old games. Here's some more with the different bags, it's kind of fun, and then there's stuff all hidden inside each of these bags. So that gives you an idea of different things. So this one's paper strips that were just sewn on there. Well glued and then sewn. Layers, sponging techniques. Um, did a installation at school that had a whole bunch of keys that was spray painted first before we assembled it into a design. But the cardboard afterwards was so cool. So I kept the cardboard and then I've, I've put it in here to use as a background sometime. And then here's another one that was a napkin. Here's the thing, all the stuff around the house that we throw out, think about how you can incorporate it into a page. This right here, this is what fruit and vegetables come in, had the bottle and so it's kind of beachy and kind of helps hold those things in. So, and then the glass jar, you can't really glue that on, it's gonna pop off. So what I did is poke through the back and I wrapped it and then tied it on so it stays. The little shelves are kind of going for wear because I carry the book around a lot to and from school. And so they're starting to fall. But it gives you an idea of all these fun things you can do to create fun journals and just keep adding to it. So I did want to go through and show you some different backgrounds. It's fun, so maybe you don't throw everything away. Most of everybody has done a sponging where you sponge paint onto a paper. But what I challenge you with is sponge it and then try different color, color combinations that you normally wouldn't do. And just play. I love doing play days because you see what you can come up with and it's no pressure to have a final product. And so play days are really fun. And with some of those play days, sometimes when we're painting and we use plastic lids from ice cream buckets a lot, um, just because it's cheaper and we're recycling and using them. But sometimes the paint's so thin that it dries on there. So one time I just peeled the paint up off those plastic lids 
and it was wet on the underside and just stuck it down on here and just put some Mod Podge over it. But it made a really cool background. So cool, I haven't done anything with that page yet, but that was really fun. That's why it's so shiny, is for that reason. This one was just different. Um, glitter is my pet peeve at school because once it's out, it's everywhere. In the hallways, all down, everywhere. Anyway, I have some liquid watercolors and bottles that had glitter in them. So I said, okay, fine, let's just do this. So I let them try different brush strokes because we were practicing how to use the brush, how to hold a brush. And so it just did this um, like an abstract design, uh, thick and thin brushes, and then came in randomly. You can kind of see maybe the glitter um, liquid watercolor that was put on top of it. But it turned out to be a pretty cool design. I mean, that could, if that was larger, that'd be pretty cool artwork that somebody might want on their wall. These are really fun. I have lots of these because when I do play day with these, I just can't stop. This is shaving cream. And a lot of you might have done the shaving cream, but it's where you take shaving cream in a, in a little plastic tub, cover it with shaving cream, Drizzle liquid watercolor works the best because you don't have to water it down already. It's already perfect um, and bold colors. Drizzle the liquid watercolor on there. And then you're gonna take a piece of cardboard. I take a long piece of cardboard about the size of my paper, a long strip, about three inches by whatever this is, 10 inches. And I take it and then I scoop it through that shaving cream and then I take my paper and I just scrape it down on there as hard as I can and scrape the, everything on there and you never know what you're gonna get. Plus, it, it smells pretty good, it still smells good. That's why you'll see several of them, similar colors but different because every time I would do it and scrape it and move the cardboard in my hand, it would change a little bit and the pattern would be a little bit different. But it's a lot of fun. Now you do have to Remember when you add more color, think of your color wheel because you could end up with browns and not bold colors if you start mixing too much. But you can see that the colors that this had in there is really fun. You can see where I waved it. So there's wavy lines through here. And here's some more. So, nope, that one's white. Here's one that was just, um, just straight stripes of color. But these are really fun. They're super smooth. You can do it on poster board, watercolor paper, uh, even drying paper and dry is fine. But these are some great backgrounds. And when you just do a play day and you do a whole bunch, you already have a bunch of backgrounds made. And so it's not like you have to go make a background just to have for this journal page. You just have fun and do some play days and create some different things to reference. I talked about weaving paper. Here's some that um, is papers, decorative papers. It's just ends of strips and just wove them and create your own pattern and design. And this is just a scrap piece of cardboard. You can even use a cereal box. Uh, nobody, if you turn it, nobody's really gonna see that side anyway. And then you can glue it down to that and that will make it a little stiffer um, to go in your book. And then you can add and create depth by adding things to it. Here's another one, different kind of design um, based on the color choices of the strips. This one, I uh, decided to make all the strips and not weave it. That was kind of fun, it was different. So I just glued the strips down. And like the one I showed you, it was sewn down. It was just random strips and they were just randomly sewn. Here's another fun thing to do. This is like the embossed wall paper I was talking about and you saw on my book. I painted this with a metallic paint, and you know, a lot of times the metallic paints are really thin and transparent. So I use a brayer, and I have some that I use for painting only, and instead, not printmaking, but just painting, because it gets dried up in there sometimes. But I rolled the paint on here, and then I just took a piece of construction paper. This is just blue construction paper, True Ray, of course, because it's archival. Um, it doesn't fade as bad, let's just say it doesn't fade as bad because I've had this one for a long time and it still looks really pretty good. And so then I just took the construction paper, laid it on there, did a rubbing just like this after I put my metallic on there. And then I had this cool background that I had created just from using the embossed wallpaper. So that's pretty, it's pretty awesome. And you know what, you already have the mess out 
you might as well just do some more and choose some different colors and print different ones. And then you'll have lots of assortment to choose when you make your pages. Okay. So here's another thing I wanted to show you. I have lots of stuff around to build the pages up with. You know, I have distressed inks. I have stamps. Um, I have markers. All kinds of markers. I have bins of stamps like this here in my studio. I find these things. I always buy them when they're clearanced and on sale. Hopefully 90% off. <laughs> and same with like this. I have like two crates of these. Sometimes people are just getting rid of them because they don't want to do crafting anymore. And so sometimes you're just lucky and you can have a lot of things just given to you. But it's really fun because you can take these and then, you know, you can just you can just stamp. And to be honest, if you take care of the stamps, you can use acrylic paint and brush it on here really cool and paint different colors. You just got to make sure that you have a media in your paint so it doesn't dry too fast since acrylic paint dries really fast. But that's really fun. So lots of options here in the studio. Sometimes it's like, don't know where to start, but you know, a good starting point is when you have all those pages to choose from. This is a piece of cardboard with the keys. Remember I showed you that? This is the other side of one. And what I did is these, uh, this is tissue paper and tissue paper comes printed with different things on it, but it makes a really cool backdrop. You could use wallpaper, wrapping paper, um, all kind of, anything that you can find. It's just really fun to start searching things out. And a lot of times if it's tissue paper or wrapping paper, grab it up after parties and stuff and say, hey, I need that. That's gonna make a cool project. Here's the one I'm just gonna show you starting. Okay, so this again is the poster board with the napkin on there. And so I have taken other strips. You can see this is like, uh, card, just cardboard. It's not even mat board. That's cardboard. And I took decorative paper and just glued it on the cardboard, um, on the, the green part. And then, then I cut other strips to put baste here. And these are some of those wood cutouts I was talking about. I love the corrugated board. I love that. It's always another nice texture that's really fun. And so, you know, this messed up right here, but guess what? There was more napkins, so I put some on a piece of scrap paper, and I have it where actually I could put cardboard behind that, and I could make that raised up. So see what I'm saying is I can make that raised up, and it would show um, like an accented half of the page, and then I could put other things over here. And so it's not finished, but it gives you an idea of some different things. These I actually made, so in the cardboard, you know, it's with cardboard, but the cardboard is just strips on the sides. It's not solid. So that allowed me to make like more little tag type things that I could stick inside here for interest. And then when I decide to write on it, I whatever mood I'm in, I can be writing about it and add it to there. I could use my stamps. I could stamp stuff. I could do embossing with embossing powder. There are so many things that you can do. But I just want you to share with you the possibilities for your backgrounds and get excited and be creative. Journaling is personal. It's up to you um, to be creative and just explore um, what your creative ideas are and be resourceful. You don't have to have lots of money to do this. Be resourceful. Use what you find scraps laying around or somebody's getting rid of stuff. Hey, that might make a great journal page. So do it, have fun, and enjoy.